important. For example, human resources, um, lack of robust supply chains, leadership and so on. Explanation of symbols on worksheets are as follows. Use coloring crayons to color the picture. Use your finger to follow the track or line or show the correct picture. Use a coloring crayon to draw a line or write a number or sound. Look at the picture and say the number or sound out loud. Use a scissors to cut on the dotted line. Look at the picture. Use these symbols for the lesson of the day, which will be allocated at the top right side of each page. For example, lesson one, prepositions and directions. Good morning boys and girls. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Janice Abrams and welcome my friend. The theme for today is we are still busy with houses. But before we continue with the lesson, remember our social distancing and sanitizing of hands. Between the fingers, good. Lesson three, reading, genders and ordinal numbers. Let's go to page 15. What do you see on that page? We see a big blue house. So what must we do on that page? We have to read the story and answer the questions that follows. So let's read there. My house is where my family lives. It is blue. There are four bedrooms where we have a kitchen and three bathrooms. Our family room is where we like to watch television together. When people come over, we eat in the dining room. We have a playroom in the basement. We have a swing in the backyard. I love my house. Now let's go over to the questions. There are five questions. You have to fill in the answers on the lines that they are shown on that page. Okay, question one. What color is the house? Blue. So we have to fill in the answer on top of the line. Question two. Who lives in the house? The family. Question three. How many bedrooms are in the house? Four bedrooms. What is in the backyard? 
Good. There is a swing in the backyard. Question five. What happens in the family room? We watch television. And remember, boys and girls, we always start with a capital letter and we end the sentence with a full stop. Let's continue with the next page, page 16. Genders. Who can tell me what is genders? Do you still remember what is genders? Okay, it is a girl or a boy or a male or a female. The gender of a person or an animal tells us whether it is a male or a female. Circle the word that matches the picture. Now there are nine pictures and we have to identify whether it's a male or a female. Let's look at the first picture. Is it a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl. So you have to circle the correct word. The next picture, is it a man or a woman? A woman. You must circle the word woman. Let's look at the next picture. Is it a lion or a lioness? It's a lion. So you have to circle the correct word. The next picture, is it a peacock or a pig? The, the next picture, is it a father or a mother? The next picture, is it a king? Or a queen? The next picture, is it a bridegroom or a bride? The next picture, is it a bull or a cow? And the last picture, is it a monk or a nun? Remember what I said? You must circle the correct word. Good. Let's continue with the next page, page 17. Are we all at page 17? Good. We have a picture there of a male and a female, a boy or a girl. Now under the picture there are two questions that we need to fill in the answers on top of the line. Question one, is father a man or a woman? A man. Are you a boy or a girl? Good, you fill in the correct answer on the line. Let's continue with the next part. And that is our nouns. Can you remember what is nouns? Nouns identifies people, places, or things. I'm going to repeat myself. A noun identifies people, places, or things. Now we have male nouns and female nouns. The male nouns is father, man, boy. The female nouns are mother, woman, girl. Match each male to a female correctly with a line. So if we go over to the board, we will see that on the one side is our males and on the other side is our females. We have to match the male with the female. I'm going to show you two examples, then you have to do the rest. Boys. With what female will we match it? 
with the girls. So we're going to make a line from the word boys to the word girls. Father. With who does father match? Mother. Good. So you must do the rest. Thank you. Let's go over to page 18. Are we all on page 18? So, we will be busy with ordinal numbers. What is ordinal numbers? Ordinal numbers is the position where something is situated. Like say for instance, when we stand in a line, then I ask, where is John standing? Is he first, second, or third in the line? Now, in this case, or on this page, we are busy with cupcakes. And we have to see, where is the cupcake standing? In which, at which position is the cupcake standing? So, let's look at the brown cupcake there. Is it first, second, or third? First. The pink one is second. The blue and orange is third. The orange one is fourth. And the brown and pink one is fifth. Write the ordinal numbers indicated by the colored cupcakes. So what must we do there? We have five cupcakes in that row. We have two cream ones, one blue one, and two cream ones again. Now at which position, at which place is the blue one Standing. Is it first, second, third, fourth, or fifth? It is third. So we will write in the word, not the number, but the word. Third, we will write there in the block. Going over to the next row of cupcakes. We have a pink cupcake, then we have four cream ones. Where is the pink cupcake situated or placed? First, second, third, fourth or fifth? It is first. So we have to write in the word first. In the block. Let's go over to the next row. We have four cream cupcakes and one blue one at the end. So where is the blue cupcake situated? First, second, third, fourth or fifth? Fill in the correct word in the block. And so you will do the next two rows as well. Where is the pink and brown cupcake situated? And where is the blue and orange cupcake situated? Remember to fill in the words where the block is situated or the empty block is situated. Fill in the word in that empty box. Let's continue over to page 19. We are still busy with our ordinal numbers. But remember, the first one we had to fill in the ordinal names. Now we must fill in the ordinal numbers itself. 
Write the ordinal number indicating the position of the starfish in each row. So we have to focus on the starfish. We have to see where the starfish is situated or placed in that row. Good. Let's look at the row of the umbrellas. We have two umbrellas, starfish, and two umbrellas again. So where, at which posi position is the starfish fish situated? First, second, third, fourth, or fifth? Fill in the correct position in the empty block provided there. The next row, we have floaties. Where is the starfish situated? First, second, third, fourth, or fifth? Second. Very, very good. And so you will continue with the glasses and the suns. Remember to fill in the correct ordinal number in the open block provided there for you. We come to the end of our lesson, but before we call on Zashi, let's first practice our social distancing, sanitizing of hands between the fingers. Good. We call on Zashi. Zashi! Bye! Hi everyone! Uh, you can't ask your friends anymore, but you can still give yourself some love. Or you can practice how to blow hugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And until next time, bye. In a time of uncertainty, false news, and fear, learn on. While the world scrambles to make new sense, while the experts turn around in circles, trying to find their way back to tomorrow, learn on. When classrooms become empty cathedrals and the trees start to bear answers, learn on. Learn on until every parent is a teacher and every teacher is a mentor learn on until you cross the boundaries of your mind until you grow eyes and sprout wings my friend learn on on sidewalks on the floor at the neighbors in the market in hallways in churches under trees at kitchen tables in riverbeds. Learning doesn't only happen between four walls. Learning happens in the small space of your enormous, beautiful mind. Start where you are. Use what you have. Learn on one. Invite learning in.
is what's new. The show packed full of news and stories just for you from BBC Africa. Want to see more? Here we go. Ten years after the protests of the Arab Spring, young Tunisians are marching in the footsteps of their elders. What is it like living in the country most affected by COVID on the continent? We'll be speaking to young people in South Africa almost a year after the first case of coronavirus there. I feel like we're just tired of the virus. We are tired, people are getting changed, people are losing family. So I feel like we are definitely devastated. Dancing themselves to a better future. You'll meet the young people from Bariga beating the odds with theatre. Dance has transformed my life. It has helped me change a lot of things. We might be from Bariga, a dirty, poor community, but we are ready to take over the world. Music made in Iswatini, why Symphony strikes the right notes and award-winning musician. We meet the country's youngest designer making traditional regalia. I like making people happy because when they're going there, they look beautiful and I'm like, yeah, that's my hands work. Why did Iswatini change its name from Swaziland? Well, we hear from the people and we meet a prince. Akiri, 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 akiri. Wash away the germs. Akili and Happy Hippo have come to play with Little Lion. Little Lion doesn't want to play. He's afraid of germs. Germs can make you sick. Don't worry, Little Lion. We will get rid of the bad germs and then you can play with us. They hunt for germs high and low, inside and outside. But the germs are nowhere to be found. What are you looking for? Asks Miss Shrub. We're looking for germs, says Akili. Germs? Germs are everywhere. They are so tiny that you can't see them with your eyes. When you touch something dirty, germs hide on your hands. With water and soap, you can get rid of the germs and make your hands clean. You must wash both sides of your hands, under your nails, and between your fingers. We will wash away the germs and make your hands clean. Akili, get fresh water. Happy Hippo, get soap. Wash, wash, wash with water. Scrub, scrub, scrub with soap. Rinse, rinse, rinse with water, and the germs will be gone. Akili and Happy Hippo run to tell Little Lion that they found a way to get rid of the germs. After we go to the toilet, after we sneeze, when we cook, and before we eat, we wash, wash, wash with water. We scrub, scrub, scrub with soap. We rinse, rinse, rinse with water, and the germs will be gone. Now we can play all day because we know how to keep the germs away. After all that playing, it's time for cake and tea. But remember to always wash your hands before you eat. The end. What's up, world? This is Shay, the goddess of the airwaves, on 99FM, Monday to Friday, serving you breakfast on the ignition between 6 and 9. We brought you to be inspired, taking you to master your destiny. Now it's time to do the work. Just show up. Put on your work boots and do the time. Make it and then make it better. Hello, world. It's your boy, Script, here on The Kingdom, where we're reminding you every single day. Get up. You've got this. Start where you are. Hey, hey, this is your girl Treza on Hitfo on 99FM, letting you know it's okay. Try. Make mistakes. Awesome. I am Siba and I'm going to be with you for quite a while. Thank you so much for joining us here on your inspiration station where we let you know. There's no easy money. There's no easy job. There's no easy life. 99FM. Do the work.
Win free airtime with hashtag learn on one. Share your comments on the lessons. WhatsApp your feedback, name and town to 081-200-6659. Hashtag learn on one. Invite learning in. On the gold coast of West Africa lies the peaceful and diverse nation of Ghana. I'm pretty close right now to the geographical center of the earth. It is also one of the last pockets for elephants in the wilds of West Africa. You know, every country in the world just about has cattle, sheep.